You don't need to be a good filmmaker to have a great video, a video that has an impact. Of course, if you are a filmmaker, your video will probably look more refined, but even sometimes having a refined video is not the best way to have an impact. What really matters is your content and how well you communicate your message. I'm Alex Antolino, creative director at Video Ask. In this video, I wanna share with you a very simple process to make a video in just five steps uh, so you can get an overview of the creative process of making a video in a very simple way. First off, you wanna start by defining what's the purpose of this video. On the creative industry, we call this a brief, you, you probably are familiar with that, but I don't wanna complicate this, so it's just basically in one sentence, what is this video gonna do for you? What's the purpose? Why are you even making this video? It's very important to have a clear idea of what's the goal of the video so you can build everything around it. Sometimes we have a preconceived idea of what we want this video to be and we just jump into it in the production and recording of it and it has happened to me before that sometimes you miss the mark a little bit. So having a very clear idea, sitting down for like literally five minutes and writing that goal on just a line can help you actually maybe even get better results. On this very simplified version of a brief, I recommend you keep in mind four things. The first one is the purpose of the video. So as I said, in one sentence, what are you trying to achieve? What is this video for? The second one is the channel. So where is this video gonna be published natively? Is this video for YouTube? Is a LinkedIn video? Is it a Reels for Instagram? It would help you define the format, the length, all these kind of things will be very clear when you understand what channel are you creating for. The third one is the format. So maybe you're creating for Instagram, but then on Instagram, of course, as you know, you have Instagram TV, you have Reels, you have Stories, you have all these different possibilities. So I'd recommend you decide what format uh, are you gonna use, because this will help you make some creative decisions on the way. And number four is your audience. So you're probably gonna say, yeah, I know my audience. I talk to my audience in all the same channels, always the same people. So why write it down for every video? And you're probably right, but even the same people don't behave in the same way or don't, they don't have the same expectations when they're on YouTube, that they want, they, when they're on Instagram, that when they are on Twitch. I would say it won't harm you, and making this one minute exercise of thinking, okay, what is the mindset of my audience, can actually spark some ideas that maybe will make eventually your video more relevant. Once your brief is clear, it's time to write a script. When writing a script, it's very important that you consider the channel and the format you're gonna use and that you're gonna be creating for. When writing the script, and by the way, when I say script, I'm not thinking about like Hollywood script, 20 pages. It just maybe, it could be like a Notion page, three bullet points, but having a script very clear will help you when you are on the camera um, to have something to hold on to. I usually use Notion and I just write some bullet points um, and like the sections of the video. So for example, for this video that you're watching, I have an intro where I presented myself, then I have the brief section, then I have the script section, and then I have the record section, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. There's a framework that you could use that it's called AIDA, attention, interest, details, and action. First, I need to grab the attention. Second, I need to generate interest by uh, like explaining what is this video gonna be about maybe, and then give more details and a call to action. Maybe your call to action is like, sign up for my newsletter. Maybe your call to action is like, watch my YouTube video is the, if this is a promo on Instagram. There's many things, but um, I would recommend this framework as a useful tool that you can use when writing a script. Your script is ready, you have your bullet points ready, so turn the camera on and let's start recording. When you're recording, it's gonna be intense, especially at the beginning. Maybe it takes a little while to get started, but it's important that you allocate some time, and I would recommend you allocate a little bit more time than the time you think you need, just to feel relaxed and make sure you have the time to do this right, and just chill, okay? Just enjoy the process. It really depends on the nature of the video and the format you're using. For example, if it's a Reels, maybe you wanna record the voiceover first and then add some shots that you've recorded later. If it's a YouTube video, you can record the talking head, which is like a shot like this, where like you're talking to a camera, and then you can record some B-roll that will make the video uh, more engaging and more rich visually. For example, um, while I'm talking about Notion, 
I can show Notion and people will be more engaged. That's a B-roll shot. When you're happy with the take that you've done, just make sure that you do an extra one for safety. I've been in many situations where like that extra safety take has saved an entire shooting on editing because there are some things you don't realize when you're shooting. Maybe the camera went out of battery or maybe your shot is out of focus and then you always have that extra take. So even if you're excited and super happy with the first take you made, do an extra one for safety and um, you make sure that you won't regret later on edit. Okay, and one extra tip, even if you are talking to a camera, make sure you cut in between like sections or something like that and just don't record everything in just one single file because if for some reason that file is corrupt later or you lose that file, you're gonna lose everything. So I recommend like you keep making clips uh, as for like one clip per section or one clip per take or something like that could be useful. Now that your shooting is done, it's time to like put everything on your hard drive and make sure you, you label every shot and you have a way to organize your folders. Editing can be scary for a lot of people who've never done it before, but luckily enough, today we have loads of tools that will allow you to edit even if you don't have editing skills. So don't worry if you are worried. Pick your software. So for example, for iPhone, I use a software called InShot. I found it to be very useful, very intuitive, um, and very, very powerful. I've edited a lot of video blogs uh, from my holidays or trips or things like that directly on my phone, and the results are amazing. Of course, if you are a Mac user, you have iMovie, which is free for simple videos. It does the job great. And then you have other online tools like the script, which is a great tool. It integrates also with Video Ask if you wanna send the video from the script to Video Ask. If you have a long piece of content that you want to short and make different clips for different social media channels, you have bit.io, which is a great tool for that. You have the loading bar, you have subtitles and, and great features and all these things that you need uh, when you're creating content for Instagram and things like that. Once the video is done, it's time for you to publish that video. Most people think that publishing is where the process ends, but in my opinion, that's when the magic starts happening. Because then that's when you're gonna get reactions. So you're gonna have analytics. For example, if you're on Instagram or YouTube, you're gonna be able to see um, how people are engaging with your video, how many visits is it getting, people are, are they watching it till the end? All these kind of things are gonna give you insights and you can learn a lot from those things. Something very, very interesting is to analyze the comments. What do people want to see? What, do, what questions do they have? The comment section of your video is the best thing you can have. It's free research for you. You can engage with people on the comments and you can learn from them and what they need so you can actually provide them with more useful content in the future. We talked about the pragmatic steps you need to follow to make a video, but I also want to address the emotional side uh, of creating a video because I think that's the really challenging part for most of us, feeling comfortable with the camera, you know, managing all the feelings, the anxiety, all these kind of things and getting used to talk to camera. So make sure if this is something you relate with, uh, uh, to check out this video where I'll give you tips on how to feel more comfortable on camera. I hope that was useful. I wanted to give you a very simple and basic overview on how to make a video. A lot of those things are very obvious in the 21st century, but still, still, I would recommend you think about the brief, think about the script, the recording, the editing, and the publishing as necessary steps. Um, and just like invest a little bit of time, maybe it's one minute, maybe it's five minutes, maybe it's three hours in each one of these steps just to make sure that all these aspects are thought out and you have a video that is made with purpose. Other than that, I think you're ready to go. So start making the video you always wanted to make this week and good luck.